My family's grocery store, JL Page and Sons Grocery, was a community hub. 7 a.m. is the time my father would open the grocery store with his brother, and he would stay there till 11 p.m. at night. There were actually days I never saw my father, even though he came home every night, because he left before I would get up to go to school, and he would come home after I was in bed. What were they doing there from 7 to 11? Talking. People would come and they would congregate and lean up against the Coca-Cola um, machine and they just talk about everything that was going on. All the um, business of the community was happening there. So people often would come by J.L. Page and Sons grocery store to find out what's happening in Durham. My grandmother was often called Mama Page by a lot of the people in the neighborhood because they would go up there and talk to her all the time. <laughs> There were a lot of people in this neighborhood who needed help. So they felt that they, they felt they could go to them for help. So if it was Sunday morning, the doorbell would ring and someone would need money to pay for something and my father would give them the money. It's a wonderful legacy, but also I realized how little I understood about what was happening to people's lives who were living so close to me, and I had no idea how different their lives were and what they did not have that uh, I did have. Being able to have food was a huge thing. So be, you know, being in a grocery store, um, if your parents have a grocery store, you were rich. And I never thought about that because we didn't own a car. We used the car with my, of my uncles. We shared a car, but we always had food, and uh, that made a big difference. So when my father would, um, my father would uh, give people food if they needed it. It was a payment plan. There was a book, and you would write down you bought um, whatever you owe for groceries. They would write it down in the book, and. That book remained open until the store closed because a lot of them never paid the bills. I threw the book away and they said, why did you throw it away? Because I didn't want anyone to know who owed money. When my father found out the 147, we called it Urban Renewal, was coming to the lower part of Fayetteville Street, he was devastated. He was hurt. He knew it was going to tear down White Rock Baptist Church, his church home, since he was a child. And he loved that church. He loved that community. And he couldn't understand how they could do that. And he would say, they say it's going to be better. They're going to bring things better to us. But I can't see how they can take that church. How can you tear down the church? I think we all felt guilty, the people down the street lost, and we were still there. We were, they didn't move us, and I thought, what would have happened to the store if they had come further down? When they tore those homes down, I, it was just unimaginable. It was unspeakable, and I think that my family didn't speak about it. I feel that by not protesting and fighting for the Haiti, that we lost the respect of our community. The people who live here, who were looking for somebody to step up and say something, looking for the leadership to say, we need to change this, to protest the destruction of this neighborhood. And for me, this community shaped who the stories I know, they shape where I am, who I have become. The importance of, of keeping this neighborhood for historical purposes so we know what it was, what it was like, and what it can be like again. I want to get out and I want to protest. I didn't do that when I was young. I didn't march. But now I think, oh my God, we cannot let this happen.